we are starting on page three of the notes, and we're going to be doing the same thing we did yesterday, but in the context of story problems. Now, from teaching geometry, like 10 years ago, what I remember is that angle of elevation versus angle of depression a lot of times really threw students off because students like to think that the angle of depression is this angle, but it is not. It is actually this angle relative to a horizontal. So I'm going to give you a little kind of trick for how to handle those angle of depression problems. Angle of elevation problems are looking up, and angle of depression problems are looking down. But the nice thing about this is we can actually turn any angle of depression problem into an angle of elevation problem just by thinking about what is looking at what. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at example five. And the first thing that I want you to notice about these story problems is there is no diagram. I know that not all of us are artists. You are going to see the extent of my drawing ability in this unit. But you do have to draw some sort of a diagram so you can see what the parts of the triangle are, similar to what we did yesterday. So let's go ahead and just sketch out what we've got here. We are standing 10 feet away from a flagpole. So here's a flagpole. I am 10 feet away from it. Ten feet. Also make a little note that says units here. Because we need to be very sure that on these story problems we are using our correct units. So that's our diagram so far. We are ten feet away from a flagpole. It says we measure an angle of elevation of 70 degrees from the ground. So angle of depression and angle of elevation are always relative to a horizontal, as you can see here. And here, our horizontal is the ground. So the angle from the ground to the top of the flagpole is 70 degrees. <clears throat> so from that spot on the ground, looking up at the flagpole is 70 degrees. Then what we are looking for is how tall the flagpole is. And we'll just say x for our variable. And now we want to try to use any right triangle stuff we can to solve this. Can I use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what x is? No. no why not? Yep, we only know one of the three sides. We need to know two of the three sides in order to be able to use the Pythagorean theorem. Can I possibly use Sokotoa? Yeah, this is a right triangle, and if you're like, well, how do we know? Should we be assuming that from our given story problem? The answer is yes. Anytime on the ACT where you've got a tree or a flagpole or some building, you can always assume that that forms a right angle with the ground. So we've got a right angle, so this is going to be going over these three steps that we talked about yesterday. Start with the angle identify the side relationships, and then determine the trig function, either so, ka, or toa. So we start with the angle. We're going to mark the 70 degrees. Next, we're going to determine the side relationships relative to that angle. So what would you say 10 is relative to 70? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Adjacent, because it's right next to it. So that is adjacent. This would be the hypotenuse. It's right across from the 90 degree angles, but I don't really care about that side in this problem because it's not a given piece of information and it's not what I'm looking for. So I don't even have to label it. So the only other side that we're concerned with is the X. What is X relative to 70? Opposite. So what we have is OA. So what trig function will we use? So is OH. Ka is AH, so OA is tangent. So we're going to use tangent. OA, so tangent of 70 degrees equals opposite X over adjacent 10. What are we going to do to solve for X? <laughs> Times it by the... <laughs> Times it by 10 to isolate the variable. So times 10. 
I gotta go see. <laughs> Get out your calculators. Make sure you're in degrees. All right, folks, so on your calculators, how do we check to make sure our mode is in degrees? Mode. Mode. And then make sure that the fourth item down has degree highlighted. So those people who are just coming back for the first time today, make sure that degree is highlighted on your calculator. Go down to it, press enter on it, and there's degree. What's the other one for? Like, what is radians. Radians is another unit, so... Kind of like we have inches and then we have centimeters for metric. It's a different unit for still taking like the length of something. So we've got metric system, we've got the English system or the American system. And then for um, angle measurements, we have degrees and we have radians. So it's just another unit. I've always preferred degrees, but radians can be useful when you're working with the unit circle. Good question. All right, folks. So we are going to take 10 times the tangent of 70. And let's go ahead and round to, let's round to the tenths place. Or actually, no, we'll keep rounding to the hundredths place. Just give us some more practice here. So if I round to the hundredths place, two places past the decimal, we look at our third digit. Is the third digit enough to bump? No. Nope. So 27.47. What? <laughs> Wonderful. So 27.47. Feet, because we are solving for a distance or a height. Beautiful. So I know we hate story problems, but was that horrible? Especially knowing that all of the problems in this unit are going to be right triangles. So we're not going to deal with any non-right triangles. They will all be right triangles. So we've got an airplane. Oh, boy. So I'm going to do what my physics teacher used to do. And that's how I'm going to draw my airplane. You draw it however you want, though. There's my plane. It takes off from the ground at an angle of elevation of 9 degrees. So it's taking off from the ground at an angle of 9 degrees. And it travels to an altitude of 32,000 feet. Do you guys know what altitude means? Altitude, I want you to define... It's perpendicular height. So if we are at an altitude of 32,000 feet, that means straight up from the ground at a right angle. So make that a right angle. And our altitude is 32,000 feet. So we have now laid out the given information in our problem. Any questions on that? So altitude is height from the ground, not this distance. So that's why, folks, on these story problems, I'm always going to require that you show a diagram. That way, if I see, oh, they thought this was 32,000 feet, I can still give you some partial credit for how you set up your trig function, how you went about solving and rounding on your calculator. But the diagram setup, I have to see. So if we want to know how far through the air the plane traveled, are we looking for the hypotenuse or this horizontal side? The hypotenuse, because through the air, we want the ground through the air, not the ground distance. So that will be our x. So now to solve for x, we start with the angle. We've got an angle of 9 degrees. What is 32,000 relative to 9 degrees? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Opposite. And what about x? That's going to be our hypotenuse. So we have O. So is that so, ka, or toa? So. So that means we are going to use our sine function. So sine of the angle, 9 degrees, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite 32,000 over hypotenuse. 
So we're using a different trig function, but what's really different about this problem is that variable in the denominator. Does anyone know or remember how we handled that variable in the denominator yesterday? You, ooh, you could multiply by the reciprocal, but I kind of think that's almost tougher to remember. What I would do here, folks, is look at the fraction, say, you a fraction, and multiply through by the denominator to level out the fraction. It seems counterintuitive because you are canceling out the variable, but what you're really doing is getting the variable to ground level out of that denominator position. So then x sine 9 degrees equals... 32,000. So what will I do from here to isolate my x? This is x times sine of 9 degrees, so we're going to divide by sine of 9. So 32,000 divided by sine of 9, and we get 204,000 558, and then rounding to two decimal places, we've got 0 0.50. Is the three enough to bump us up? Nope. So you can just write it as 0.5. Those of you taking chemistry, we don't worry about sig figs here or carrying it out to the exact two decimal places. If it's a zero, you don't need to write it. But what do we need after that 0. 0.5? Feet! Now, I remember when I was teaching geometry, I'd be like, hey, don't forget to check if your answer is reasonable. And the kids would be like, well, how am I supposed to know if that's reasonable or not? Does that seem like a long distance or a reasonable distance for an airplane to travel? Sure. Now, let's see what happens if I had it in radians. Let's just see how off we'd be. Ooh, it's fairly close. Again, that wouldn't make sense, but there was a problem yesterday where we got a negative answer. Would a negative or a decimal make sense for this answer? No. So there's some, like, level of accuracy that maybe you wouldn't be sure of, like 77 thousand versus 204,000. I probably wouldn't expect you guys to know that, but knowing that, that a negative or a value of zero uh, wouldn't be okay, or like something like 0.5, um, that's the kind of accuracy we are checking for. For the page. All right, so on example seven, We've got a person in a hot air balloon that is at an altitude of 1,500 feet. Now I will try my best to draw a balloon. And there, we've got a balloon. It's at an altitude of 1,500 feet. So that's the perpendicular distance from the ground. So here's the ground. From here to here is 1,500 feet. Now it says the balloon is looking down in the distance, or the person in the hot air balloon is looking down in the distance at her car. So she's up here, and she's looking down at the car. If she knows that the horizontal distance from the balloon to the car is one mile, 5,280 feet, we want to use consistent units here, then what is the angle of depression to her car? Now let's go ahead and explicitly show that that would be a right angle. So altitude, perpendicular distance to the ground, looking down in the distance at her car, and if she knows that the horizontal distance, so horizontal meaning this way, from the balloon's location to the car is 5,280 feet, what is the angle of depression to her car? So angle of depression to the car is balloon 
looking down at car. But as I said on the previous page, we can change any angle of depression problem to an angle of elevation problem. So angle of elevation would be car looking up at the balloon. I want you to mark what angle you think that angle of elevation is. If the car is looking up at the balloon, we want to find that angle. Raise your hand if you got that right. So this would be the angle of elevation looking up at the balloon. And if you're like, well, what's the big deal with the angle of depression? The problem is a lot of times students think that the angle of depression is this one, but the angle of depression is always relative to a horizontal and your angle of depression would be this one. Now, are those two angles the same? Yeah, if you remember with our parallel lines, we've got alternate interior angles, which are always equal to each other. But as you can see, it's pretty tempting when we're talking about an angle of depression to mark the angle on our triangle instead of the angle that it actually is relative to a horizontal. So as a rule, I say use your triangle diagram as much as possible. And if it's angle of depression looking down, change it to angle of elevation looking up because those two angles will always be the same. Does that, does that make sense? I think the angle of depression problems are the toughest. Just know that they always have to be relative to a horizontal. Angle of depression and angle of elevation will always be the same. So I always change it to looking up in order to figure out what angle I am trying to find. So that's what we are looking for here. We want to find the angle of elevation, which we're going to call theta. Zero with a line through it, that's our variable that we use for angles. Now, even though we're solving for an angle here, we still start the process in the same way. I mark the angle, there it is. And we say, what is the side relationship of 5,280 to that angle? Is it opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Adjacent. And what about 1,500? Opposite. So we've got Ola. So what trig relationship will we use? Toa. So tangent. So tangent of theta equals opposite, which is the 1,500, divided by the adjacent, 5,280. How do we break that theta? out of the tangent function. Because remember, this is tangent of theta. <coughs> so it's trapped inside parentheses there, inside an operator. How do we get rid of tangent? Inverse tangent, which is tangent to the negative one. Tangent to the negative one is how we write it, folks who were gone yesterday, but how we read it is the inverse tangent. Just like squaring and square rooting cancel each other out, Tangent and inverse tangent cancel each other out. So goodbye to my tangent over here. Hello to my free theta. And what we are going to do is take the inverse tangent of that stuff on my calculator. To access inverse tangent, it is right above tangent. So you'll do second tangent to get that inverse tangent. There's our tangent negative 1. 1,500 divided by 5,280. Did I change my mode back? I did not. So that angle kind of showed up on my radar. Of, that's a pretty small angle, so I'm going to go ahead and do it again in degrees. And we get, ooh, this is a good one. See if you can round this one to the hundredths place.
hypotenuses. And what is our unit if it's an angle? Degrees. Very good. And again, we're not going to deal with radians, so it's not a big, big issue now, but it still is a good idea to always put your units on there. Any questions on that one? All right, let's go ahead and move to example eight. Um, I think the setup of this one is a little bit harder. So if you're like, I don't think I would have drawn it this way, that's okay. You're not going to have any that are quite this hard on the homework. So we've got a person sitting on a 30-foot pier overlooking the ocean. So normally a pier is kind of like a dock. This is just like a big overlook outlook point. So I'm going to draw my little person. And they are standing on this pier that is 30 feet up. from the ocean. His eye level is three feet above the pier. So if this is the pier, and this is our eye level, this distance is three feet. From here to here. He sees the, a whale surface in the ocean. There's the whale. If the <coughs> angle of, the, of depression of the whale is 20 degrees, how far is the whale from his eyes? So we are going to connect the guy's eyes to the whale. We're given the angle of depression. We'll see if you guys can figure out where that angle is going to go. And we want to know how far is the whale from his eyes. So if I make this into a triangle, are we looking for the hypotenuse or the opposite side? The hypotenuse. How far is the whale from the eyes? I want you to see if you can figure out where the 20 degrees is going to go. Give it a try. And if you're wrong, cross it off, erase it. But give it a shot. Angle of depression of the whale means looking down at the whale has an angle of depression of 20 <coughs> degrees. You can change it to an angle of elevation problem if you say the whale is looking up at the guy. So if you wanted to just straight up use the angle of depression as is, this would be 20 degrees. If you want to change it from a looking down to a looking up, then the whale would be looking up at an angle of 20 degrees. I think this is easier because if you use the angle of depression, you would have to take 90 minus 20 to figure out that this is 70 degrees, and that would be the angle that way you would use in the problem. So changing it to a looking up problem, I think, is easier. So folks, there's a few other things that make this problem a little bit tough. First, X is the hypotenuse side. That's easy enough. But what is this side relative to 20 degrees? It's opposite. But what is the full length of that side? 33 feet. So in that triangle, that was a terrible squiggle bracket. In that whole triangle, I am going to need to use 33 feet for that side. See if you can do the setup, deciding on what trig function you'll use, and solve for X.
So this is opposite and hypotenuse. So, so for our trig function, we are going to use. So sine of 20 degrees is opposite, 33, over the hypotenuse, x. To solve, we're going to get that x out of the denominator by multiplying both sides by x. So then x sine 20 is 33. We divide by sine 20. And 33 divided by sine 20 gives us 96.49. Point four nine. What? Feed. Feed. Very good. And that would be our final answer. So, folks, we've got 15 minutes before lunch. I think that should be enough time to do this homework quiz over the first section. So, I'll go ahead and get this passed out. Um, there are a few things we need to adjust on here. I'm pretty sure it says round to the tenths, and we are going to change that to hundreds. But you can go ahead and start on that first problem right away, which is stating those trig ratios. Ooh. And then folks who were gone yesterday, you don't have to complete it. You can <coughs> you can maybe try the last story problem, but just write absent up at the top of it. All right, folks, so what I would like you to change on this, 